Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I want to come out and share some things with you that I've received this past week that I think will encourage you. Things concerning our blessed hope, the harpazo, the rapture of the church. And I wanted to preface this message with just the, the reality that I know many are being persecuted, many are being chastised for their enthusiasm and their excitement for the rapture and for, you know, being too rapture um, obsessed and talking about it. And as I was thinking about that this morning, I actually, uh, I had heard somebody once compare that mentality to a schoolgirl mentality. And um, I was going over that in my mind and I was saying, Lord, you know, I'm just kind of like, am I guilty of that? And I felt in my spirit, do you believe my servant Paul had a schoolgirl mentality? And I started thinking about that and I was like, no. And then I was reminded how in 2 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul was sharing about the rapture in chapter 2 and how he, at, he concluded that chapter by saying to encourage one another with these words. And then I realized that I have to look to the Word of God alone for my instruction on what I'm going to talk about and um, what is appropriate and what is right for us to be focused on. And I, I know that the Lord has given me many messages concerning the rapture throughout the past several years. And this is to encourage the body of Christ to continue to hold on and persevere through the difficult days, knowing that the Lord is going to come and get us at the right time. And so if I am guilty of a schoolgirl enthusiasm for the Lord's return, so be it. Uh, if anybody's offended by that, so be it. I am going to continue watching and waiting for the Lord and be excited about his return because I believe that delights his heart. As I know, I would be um, delighted if my children were excited about me coming to visit them, okay? So that said, I wanted to share uh, a vision and a dream I was given a few nights ago. I was actually listening to praise and worship music. And as I was listening to this music, I fell asleep and I had a vision and I saw the number 450. And when I woke up, I felt the Holy Spirit impress on my spirit to go look that up in the Hebrew and the Greek. Now in the Hebrew, the number 450 means God is knowing. So in other words, God knows. And then in, in the Greek, it means it's like a resurrection of the dead to rise up, to get up, to come up, okay? And so I was thinking about that, and I thought, well, that's that's kind of cool. That's almost like, you know, God knows when the rapture is going to happen, and resurrection of the righteous dead, that's coming. So then I uh, fell asleep, and then I woke up in the early morning hours, and I was contemplating this dream that I had been given back in April. I think it was March or April, and I shared it in a YouTube video. And basically, in this dream, I was telling my husband, this is the first Christmas that we won't be able to give our neighbors Christmas gifts. And this is something we've traditionally done over the years on Christmas Eve. And after I said that, I was uh, singing this song and the words were real simple. It was just, oh God, we are leaving. We are leaving. We are leaving. So I was thinking about that as I laid there and I, I was asking the Lord, Lord, it, why will we not be able to give our neighbors Christmas gifts? Are we going to get injured? Maybe go home to be with you, be killed or something? Or is this pointing to the time of the removal of the church? I just, I don't want to be quick to assume everything is uh, referring to the rapture, but I just couldn't really put that together, what that, what he was referring to for sure. So I was asking for more insight. Then I fell asleep. And in this dream, all right, I was in, uh, it was like my mother-in-law's kitchen and I was standing at the stove and she was there and my husband was there. And uh, just for a little bit of perspective, uh, my mother-in-law and I have gotten along, but she's not been real accepting and cr she's been critical and sometimes mean. And I've just done my best to get along, all right. But in this dream, uh, she was not being very nice and she was just kind of being rude. And I, I said to her, I said, if you continue acting like this, I said, I'm going to leave and you're not going to see me. You're not going to see me again. And I said, is that what you want? And she nodded her head. Okay. Now I want to, before I continue with what I said to her, make this 
clear that I believe my mother-in-law is symbolic of Israel because I believe I was symbolic of the church in the dream and Israel is the mother of the church, okay, based on um, Rachel and uh, being symbolic of the church and, and she was married to Jacob and then they gave birth. She had Joseph and Benjamin, who are the two types of Christ at, you know, Joseph at his first coming and then uh, Benjamin at his second coming. Okay, so that said, this is what I turned to my mother-in-law and said. I said, for the past 26 years that I have been married to your son, you have been rude and kind and mean, and I have forgiven you over and over and over. Okay, this is speaking of grace. I have forgiven you over and over and over. But then I went on to say something to the effect that I'm, now I'm leaving, now I'm going to go. And my husband was a little upset, but I said, this is what she wants, all right? Now, I believe Israel and the unbelieving world are basically in, in the same boat, okay? So God has been pouring out grace. God has been offering grace for the past 2,000 years, and Israel and the unbelieving world have not responded to that grace. And that time is going to come to an end, all right? We know that. And later on, as I was contemplating the dream more, and the number 26 kept coming to me like there was significance there. And the Holy Spirit prompted me to look up Isaiah 26, like to get further insight. So as I was reading through Isaiah 26, I found some very interesting scriptures that actually correlated to the vision of the number 450 and the meaning of 450 in the Hebrew and the Greek uh, and the grace message. So in Isaiah 26, 10, it says that, if grace is shown to a wicked man, and I'm just uh, paraphrasing, if grace is shown to a wicked man, he does not learn righteousness, all right? So grace has been being poured out all this time, and those who have not responded to that grace are still, they're not in the righteousness of Christ. They haven't responded. And then if you go down, I think it's verses 19 and 20, it talks about the earth is going to give up her dead, and she, they're going to rise up, and then in the next verse, uh, the Lord is saying, come into uh, your rooms, my people, for a little while until the indignation has passed. So most know that that scripture from Isaiah 26, I think 19 and 20, refers to the beginning of Jacob's trouble when the church is removed and brought into a safe place during that time. So all of these things tied together. And now I'm still not saying that I have the time of the rapture, that this is the year, this is the time. All I'm saying is I believe we are extremely close and many others are being given messages uh, that we're out of time and that we are getting ready to uh, be removed. Time is up. And so I want to encourage you to just keep looking up, church. Don't forget about our blessed hope. Don't let anyone take away your hope of the return of Christ for his people. Don't let anybody bully you into believing that that is displeasing to the Father, because it is not. I am telling you, it delights his heart. Please continue just hoping for the time of the return of Jesus for his church. I believe it's closer than any of us may think. Take all of this to the Lord in prayer, and as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.